Hey guys, welcome to the Build Your Vision podcast, the podcast for young and emerging entrepreneurs who are looking to build their best business and their best life. I'm your host, Cleavon Davis, and today we are talking about social media, how you can use it to improve your business and your personal brand. Now, social media has turned into more than just a fun communication platform. It has become literally an online portfolio for who you are, what you represent, and what you have to offer to the world. Uh, Therefore, as an entrepreneur, a creative, a visionary, it is imperative that your social media game is right and tight because it provides validation for who you are, honestly, as a real person. Now, you might be saying to yourself, oh, since when do I have to validate myself through a screen? Like, I I know, I know it's, it's a different mindset, but whether you agree with it or not, that's none of my business, but I'm just telling you how it is. If you want to increase your reach, your network, your influence, your customer base, a great way to do that is through social media. So to help me break down this entire social media game thing, I brought in Andrea Jones, the founder and CEO of the Savvy Social School and the Savvy Social Podcast. Andrea, also known as Online Drea, is a professional social media strategist named one of Social Report's top marketers to follow in 2019. So I'm super excited to get into this episode with her and you should be as well. And if you haven't already, you know, just hit that subscribe button to directly receive more free like-minded information like this in other episodes. Without further ado, let's get into this episode with Andrea Jones about social media. Let's go. Loading. It's a case study for success. Be teachable. What better way to learn than to just ask? The learning process becomes a journey. Turning dreams into realities. Part of execution is is totally believing whatever you're doing is going to work. What are your passions and what are your gifts? And that's where it really starts. Chances are for taking. Take a chance on yourself. Any and everyone is capable of being a leader. You're not going to have all the answers immediately. Wow. Mentors to, to expose you to things that you otherwise wouldn't know. It was all I thought about and dreamed. Like, I, I would literally get up in the morning, practice, because I knew the opportunity, the time would come. Just do it. My name is Andrea Jones. I'm a social media strategist, and I work with podcasters and businesses, helping them build profitable communities online. So I do that in two ways. Number one is through the Savvy Social School, which you're a part of, which is a really great place for uh, people to learn how to do exactly that, build profitable communities. Um, But then I also do it for my clients, which is where I uh, actually spend most of my time, uh, just staying relevant, doing the work for my clients creating content for them, growing their communities um, as well. Awesome. Um, okay, so where I want to go with this is we're going to use the, our favorite character on the show, Katie. Um, and Katie has a business where she tames or whispers to cats and she helps people um, with their cats. And she wants to put her business on social media because she knows there's a lot of traffic on social media. Uh, but with p- social media today, there's so many different platforms, even the ones we don't talk about that much, um, whether it's Pinterest or Tumblr or uh, there are lots of them out there. And she doesn't know whether she should just focus on one platform or she should try to reach more people by going on all of them. She doesn't know which one to really do. Should I go wide or should I just narrow down on one platform? So what would you say for that? 
Yeah, and that's a great question for Katie because a lot of us struggle with this. Like, where do I spend my time? Um, so the first thing I recommend for Katie is to look at which platforms she just naturally likes. Is it Facebook? Is it Instagram? Is it Twitter? Where does she find herself spending time um, on those platforms that she just already understands and knows? It's a really great place to start. And then I would ask Katie to kind of look at where her um, ideal target audience hangs out as well. So it's a little bit of a combination of what she likes and where her people are hanging out, where her um, fellow cat lovers are. Um, And for the most part, most of the major platforms will have her target audience. So that's good news for Katie. Um, But also there are some platforms that may be uh, better for her to hang out on. Um, So for instance, if she is in a local Facebook group that's for uh, pet lovers, that could be a really great place for her to spend some time and a really great place for her to network with those potential um, clients for her business. Right. So yeah, I know that definitely applied for me when I started trying to get on social media. I was really heavy on Instagram and Snapchat. And then I discovered LinkedIn. Um, And I knew about LinkedIn, but I wasn't really using LinkedIn. I just had one. Like, I feel like a lot of professionals have these like, oh, you should make a LinkedIn. You just make one. Um, But I started to realize that my primary audience was actually on LinkedIn for people who are involved in business and entrepreneurship and things like that. So I noticed that my engagement went up so much when I started putting things more on LinkedIn that targeted that audience rather than, you know, me putting up things about business with people who I play basketball with on Instagram. Uh, It's not the same type of audience and you won't get that same type of engagement. And speaking of engagement, I kind of want to go to that uh, a little bit next. So Katie, okay, she, she realized that her main platform that she loves to use all the time, she's on it all the time already is Instagram. Um, And she knows lots of people who have cats and stuff who are also on Instagram. So she's like, okay, I think Instagram is the platform that I'm going to focus down on. How does she, she, she makes the, she makes the page um, and she's trying to figure out, hmm, okay, should I make a completely new page or should I keep the page I already have because I already have followers um, and just mix my personal and business page together. I feel like that's something that people struggle with a lot where they don't know whether to make a completely new page for their business and start over or whether they should just combine the two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a fair question because um, the hardest part is like, okay, do I want to manage two Instagram accounts? Yeah. <laughs> um, so it can be, it can feel like a lot of work. Um, there's two things I suggest. Number one, it depends on how much uh, of your business is you. So a lot of people probably work with Katie because they really like her and they want to be They want to have her as their go-to person for everything related to their cats. And so I do think for her, it could be interesting to have that level of personal touch, but also have it as a business account. But it really depends on how much Katie wants to have her personality in her business as well. There are some people who are very private and they're they will want to live private lives, and that's fine. Um, in that case, I would suggest creating a separate account. Um, I will say this. If you're on any platform and you're very specific about the types of people that you're talking to, so in Katie's instance, it's really only cat parents. So um, I have two dogs, for instance. I probably wouldn't follow Katie. It's really specific. Mm-hmm. Um And so if she really makes that clear front and center on her account, um, that will go a whole lot further. So whether she has a personal or whether she has a business or whether she separates the two, no matter what she does, she really has to make sure that what she like how she makes her money is very front and center. Um, And so it is a little bit of a personal choice, depending on how she feels about um, how much personality she wants to add into her business. Um, So I can't really speak for her on that aspect. But um, even if she has that personal account and she's talking about business things, um, really has to be like front and center, very, very clear what she does so that she's attracting the right people. Because what I don't want to have happen with Katie is I don't want her to uh, start 
start attracting people who just like looking at cute cat pictures. Mm -hmm. um, while that may be nice, those aren't the types of people who would eventually get her services if they don't have a cat. <laughs> so she really wants to make it clear that this is for the uh, advancement of her business. She's trying to build things. She is going to talk about her services and that sort of thing. And that will just get her a whole lot farther to her business goals. Okay, awesome. So um, that, that makes a very good point. And I think what I decided to do was make a separate one. In fact, I, I, I at first had them both connected, but then I realized that there was such a a hodgepodge of what was going on my on my page even i was confused about who is this guy <laughs> so um katie said you know i'm gonna make a a separate business page where i only talk about taking care of cats so that when someone visits this they know what they're getting every single time when they follow they're not also going to be seeing what i'm eating for lunch it's just going to be about cats so she wants to grow this page now because now she's starting from ground zero again. Uh, she has zero followers um, and she's also just now starting to put up posts um, on this page. There's not a whole lot of content. How do you gain followers um, when you're first starting out on, on your page? I know lots yeah. of people just start following people um, at first, maybe people that they know or people who they know are interested in it already. But how would you say is the best way to go about that? Yeah, so now that she has her business page, I think that's a great move for Katie. Um, she really wants to make sure, first of all, that her bio is optimized to speak to the right people. So again, she's helping, you know, she's the cat whisperer. She's helping people in that way. Um, and then you already said she's posting some content. So I'd really make sure that she has uh, a nice mixture of content where she's showcasing her authority. So she's sharing what she knows about cats. Um, but then she's also talking about her services. It's really important that she talks about it at least uh, one in every five posts, probably a little bit more than that. Mm hmm. So once she, if she has those two things down, now she's getting ready to find those people, find her cat people. And thankfully, a lot of us who have pets like posting our pets a lot on social media. So for her, it's really going through maybe a hashtag or, um, you know, people, maybe they've checked in at a local pet store and really engaging with those people using what I call the savvy engagement growth recipe. So with that recipe, it includes liking some pictures. So very casual, just um, liking a picture on Instagram. And by doing this, she's playing into people's natural curiosity, right? So when we see someone like our photo and we don't know who they are, sometimes we just get curious. So we click over and we look on their profile, which is why it's really important that she has like in her profile clearly what she does. And she's got some posts going out already. Um, also in the recipe is commenting. So leaving really specific comments about what's happening in that picture. So instead of saying just like nice pick, which, you know, may come across very innocently, there's a lot of robots out there that are doing <laughs> yeah, the same thing. Yeah, I hate thing. those. Oh <laughs> <laughs> They're really annoying. They're really annoying, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so just being really specific about the picture. So, I mean, if you're in the cat space, um, even just uh, doing something specific, like, you know, I like your cat's collar or, um, you know, your cat seems like he has a very goofy personality, um, anything that's like specific to the picture. You can take this a step further by also following them and sending direct messages. So those are kind of the elements of the engagement recipe. But I really want to make this um, clear that this she's not promoting herself. So she's not going and commenting like, buy my services. She's not sending direct messages that say you need to sign up for whatever class she's offering. Um, she's really just starting that conversation. And I like to relate this to... Um, dating. So mm -hmm. if you're like dating someone, you don't just run up to them and go, marry me. Like that's <laughs> a little aggressive. It's a little weird. <laughs> yeah. Flags going I mean, up. Could, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it could work for some people, but most people would be like, that's, you know, too much. Yeah. So 
It may start with just eye contact. Um, it may start with giving them your number, and then you have a conversation, and then you go out, and then you meet their parents, and then you know all of those things that go into a dating scenario. You want to approach potential customers in that regard because when we're when we're on social media, oftentimes we're not thinking about buying something. So it can be a little. It can feel like you're interrupting a little bit if you go buy this thing that you weren't even thinking about. Um, so in Instead, it's it's uh, networking. It's building up that relationship with that person, so that when they have a, something challenging happening with their cats and they need to turn to someone, who they're going to turn to? Katie, the person who's been in their world, commenting on their posts, right. sending you know messages to them, just being a nice human person. Um, and so now she's kind of like the first thought when they have any issues with their cat. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's so important. And like the thing that I'm noticing the most, even with what I've been doing. So like uh, if people follow me or or um, or they comment on my posts or something like that, I think it's so important to get your conversion rate up because I, I'm in this world. And if you comment on my thing and I like your comment, oh, it was a good quality comment. I'm going to click on your page. If I look at your page and I can't quite tell what's happening or your bio might be really great. Um, you've got your bio down packed. I can tell exactly what you do, blah, blah, blah. But then the content under it doesn't quite align with what your bio is saying. Like uh, you actually showing me how you can help me. Uh, I kind of just check out immediately. And I'm saying that from experience and I know I'm thinking about it and I think that's a good way to go about it. You kind of have to think about how you think as a follower, not as the person who's trying to get followers. Um, what turns you off? What makes you follow someone else? And I know that's, that's a big thing for me um, when I go to someone's page. I have to see that the content isn't just, you know, uh, do great things today. Bye. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. it's not really showing me how, you know, you're a life coach. I want to see exactly what courses you have, exactly what you've been doing, some video content, maybe so I can see your personality. Things like that, I think, will just increase your conversion rate. If you're doing these things, commenting in these worlds, following these hashtags, um, I think that just helps as well. Yeah, it really, really does make a difference when you um, have a very clear profile. It makes that decision easier. And I like what you said about putting yourself in the other person's shoes. Like, how would you respond if someone were to direct, direct message you and say, like, buy this thing? Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not going to be that interested. But exactly. if you if you think about it in the terms of building a relationship, I think that's a really great um, kind of way to approach that process. Right. So um, as far as the this word is becoming a more mainstream thing, as, as at least in like the marketing, social media business world and that world, that word is algorithm. Um, and it kind of leads into two questions. Uh, one is this Instagram algorithm and of course, algorithms on other platforms are all different. YouTube and, and LinkedIn and all that stuff. But uh, since we're just talking about Instagram right now. Uh, what we all love the days when, uh, Instagram was chronological, um, when you could just put something up and depending on when you put it up, that's when people would see it. And the people that followed you saw what you put up, but now, you know, things have changed. Um, not everything is as visible or things are shown more frequently than others. How does someone kind of optimize what they're putting out there to go with the algorithm that Instagram is working with right now? And what exactly is that algorithm? Yeah. So let's start with this. Instagram wants people to stay on their platform as long as possible. Right. <laughs> they want people to consume as much content as possible. So they're, they're spending a lot of money trying to figure out the magic recipe for keeping people on the platform longer. Mm -hmm. Um, so with that, they're really analyzing how users interact with posts. So if you want to pay attention to the algorithm, it's trying to show people the posts that they're most likely going to interact with first and trying to keep that as like a, a loop of posts that they're most likely going to interact with. So your actions teach the algorithm what you want to see. So when we're talking about 
this from the perspective of Katie, for instance, and she wants to make sure people are seeing her posts. She's got to kind of train her audience to interact with her posts so that they continue to see them. Oh. So that's that's the key to the, the algorithm. So thankfully, she's in a space that makes that easier, being that we all love cute cats. <laughs> so for her, I would really, like, her messaging can be in her caption, but I would focus a lot of her imagery on just cats, her clients' cats, um, you know, cats that are like Instagram cat, famous cats, any type of cat videos work really well, anything that can get people looking at her posts for longer and engaging with them. Those are the two things that the algorithm is looking for. They want to see how long are people staring at your post. So sometimes this means a video because they're looking for more than two seconds. Um, sometimes that means it's a longer caption or maybe a thought-provoking caption or maybe a funny picture. Whatever they, you can do to get people looking at your posts for longer. Um, the second thing is actually engaging with your post. So asking questions works really great to get people to comment. Um, you have to be careful with just asking for a comment blatantly, which is something I used to love doing, like comment below with your thoughts, but uh, Instagram doesn't really like that too much. So you kind of have to just ask a question. Um, or even things like um, just getting them to like the picture is a really great way to encourage engagement. Um, those are the things that Instagram likes, and that will help your audience see your posts more frequently. Uh, but the thing to remember here is that Instagram wants to keep people on their platform for longer. So if they notice that you're posting and posting and posting and nobody's engaging with your posts, they're going to look at let's say the individual who follows you and say, hmm, this person hasn't engaged with the last three of their posts. I'm going to show them something else. So Instagram may show them a different post instead of yours. Mm. Um, so really, really understanding your audience is a, is a great place to start because if they're not engaging with your posts, uh, that makes it a lot harder for you. I will also say this, that something I've noticed recently is that um, any Instagram and Facebook, you know, Facebook owns Instagram. And so I've noticed a trend in um, announcement posts or celebration posts, happy birthday posts. Those tend to be higher up in the feed. So, you know, someone gets engaged or they announce that they're having a baby or um, they, you know, are celebrating five years in business or whatever it may be. Those posts tend to be at the top of the list. So if you need to, like, boost your uh, algorithm, Find something to celebrate. Find something to announce. You know, have something like that in in your rotation so that, you know, that post is at the top. And then those posts are so easy for us to engage yeah. with. I know every time I see a post like that, I'm like, oh, congratulations. Right. Like, it's an easy way for me to comment. Um, so that's kind of a little bit of a hack. If, if Katie can find a way to do that, even if it's like, oh, it's my cat's third birthday and she can post that <laughs> on there. It has nothing to do with her core business, but it does help encourage engagement. engagement. Yeah. Yeah, I've been trying to figure out myself how to uh, how to really increase that engagement, engagement, especially in the comments. Um, uh, and and it kind of is a little difficult. I'm not going to lie. Um because you don't want to, like you said, blatantly ask for comments. That's not the best way to go about it. But also um, asking quality questions is also something that I think encourages it. And that could be a little difficult sometimes, especially with certain types of posts. So I think it might be maybe a good idea to just have certain types of posts that you have in your rotation that are just good for asking questions because it's kind of hard to do it on all of them, or it might seem a little contrived or forced. Um, so I don't know, that's something to also think about and for me to think about myself. Um, and of course, of course, also Katie has to work that out as well. <laughs> um, and, and moving forward with that, you are you already touched on the question I was going to ask about engagement um, when you started talking about the algorith algorithm, because that's kind of the key to the algorithm right there. Um, so thanks for answering that. I know you have some things like that in your Safi Social School where you kind of give some templates on um, how to do that and, and increase that engagement with some hacks that you have with that don't seem weird, but they work. And, and yeah, but um as far as it goes for, okay, so Katie has been doing this. 
she's getting some followers on her on her page um she's getting a lot of profile visits now this is good but she also has to figure out that you know she has to remember this is still a business it's not just social media so converting those followers or visitors on her page into customers is really key for her. So how's what's the best way to optimize your page to make sure that you are trying to convert as many customers and clients as possible? Yeah, I think that's a really good question because as businesses, we get so focused on the very last mm-hmm. step. So that last step is we want people to buy our services. Um, sometimes we forget that there's little baby steps in between there. And so for Katie, I want her to think about what's the first step that someone takes before just giving her money for things. So for them, it may be, um, you know, sending a message to their her contact form. It may be booking a consultation call with her. It may be just signing up for some information that she has available, you know, as a lead magnet. Um, whatever that next step is, that's the thing that she wants to make very clear on her mm, profile. Okay. Um, to, to help people get closer to that decision. Also, that it's a really good indication for her who she needs to follow up with. Um, so who has indicated interest in her services without just saying, buy this thing, here's the link mm-hmm. to give me money, um, giving people those next steps. I think that's a really great way to do that. Um, and so for Katie, too, um, I want her, again, to talk about this very often in her posts because the actions that she's taking are going to increase her followers. So as she's going out and commenting and liking on people's things in her posts, she also needs to be talking about that next step very frequently so that people know that, hey, she's not doing this as a hobby. This is her business. This is how she makes money. And it may feel a little bit repetitive to her to talk about it, but she has to remember that her post is mixed in with hundreds of other posts every day. Nobody's going to remember that, you know, last week she talked about the very same topic. So she needs to, like, talk about it to the point that she's getting annoyed with herself. Like that's how often she's talking about Mm -hmm. her services and that next step, which could be, you know, booking a consultation call with her. Um, And a really great way to do that is to talk about the pain points. So, um, you know, the challenges people have with their cats, but also talk about the benefits of her service. So talk about how what life looks like after people go through working with her. Um, so by talking about those two things very often, and again, in really talking about the next step, like if you had this pain point or if you want to have life after this challenge you're having, then, you know, send me a message, fill out my form, book a call with me, those, that type of languaging. Mm-hmm. And is like a good example of that, um, let's say she has a video where um, she's doing these things with this cat and the cat is just behaving in a really great, great manner. And she's like, if you want to figure out how I did this or how to keep your cat from scratching your couch, go to my website or click a or get a one-on-one consultation with me for free or uh something like that is that something like what you're talking about yeah exactly if she's got videos showcasing what she's doing even better okay um and then the you know the call to action at the video would be like hey i want to help you do this as well reach out to me and then whatever her her thing is to do that um and i think sometimes we get a little nervous about it as business owners because it feels you know, feels like you're selling right. or or it, it may feel like you're, you know, you're being really aggressive. But I think that when we come at it from a perspective of helping mm-hmm. and, and providing value, that's so much easier for us, like our brains to comprehend. Um, so the video idea you have for Katie is perfect because she's showcasing what she's doing. So she's not just telling people she's right. showing. Um, and then because of that, she should feel very confident to ask at the end of showing, like, here's what I do. If you want me to do this for you as well, I'd love to help you. And here's how. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So Katie's Katie's doing pr- pretty good by now. Uh, she's starting to gain followers, gain traction and all that stuff. Now, another thing that I know is hard uh, for especially for just content creators in general, this could be on YouTube, this could be podcasting, this could be whatever. It's just coming up with ways to because one key to growth that we kind of figuring out on on social media is consistency. 
and finding stuff to post or how to not feel like you're saying the same thing every single day or maintaining that that constant content uh, providing people value can be kind of hard. How do you keep bringing new value to people every day or however many times you post a day or whatever it is? It could be a little difficult. Yeah. So for someone like Katie, I would um, actually recommend for her to keep track of the questions people ask her during her consultation calls or any, but if anybody's interested in her service, mm-hmm. um, because those are the types of things she should be addressing in on her in her posts. Um, but I do recommend spreading it out, and I have what I call the five pillars of content. So one pillar is your promotional content, and that's where um, she can just directly say, you know, it's like that video directly asking people to join her in the next step. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the other four pillars are things like engaging content, so just asking a question, um, entertainment content, so just having a cute cat picture. Um, it, it can be um, a collaboration content. So it's what I call community content, where maybe she's showcasing um, a specific type of cat food she recommends or a specific type of brush for your cat. So it's like she's really showcasing that she's not um, by herself. She has other people in the community who she relies on as well. Um, And then, you know, having content that um, really just helps educate people on what she does. So showcasing what she does in a way that teaches people something new. So if you really rely on those five pillars, um, Katie will have a consistent stream of content that she can pull from at any time. That's good. That's a really good idea. Um, Yeah, that's a great way to think about it. You kind of could mark it up by day so that you know, like every day you're promoting or you're putting out this type of content. Um, and, yeah. and it varies from platform to platform, of course, like YouTube and podcasting and things are a little different cause those, that content's a little more evergreen. Um, but as far as like the ones like, uh, let's say Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, things like that, where it's more just rapid, you know, things are just in your face all the time. People are posting all the time. Um, how often should, should someone post? Should they post every day, three times a week, every three times a day, you know, people have so many different, uh, different types of advice for these things. It could get a little confusing. Yeah. So I recommend actually um, breaking it down by time, like time commitment, um, because I do think that um, we can easily spend a lot of time doing this. Yes. <laughs> and I don't want you to do this because social media is just one part of marketing. Right. It's just one part of what Katie does. She actually has to deliver the services. She's got bookkeeping to do. She's got client consultations. Like there's so many other things she has to do. Mm-hmm. She should not be spending all of her time on social media. No. So I recommend that Katie Katie sets aside one hour a week for social media, just writing her posts. For some people, that may mean they only get three posts in that week. That's fine. That's a good place to start. As she gets more comfortable with it, she may be, uh, you know, be able to do four posts or five posts, minimum three posts. Mm-hmm. Um, but start there and see how much you can get done in an hour. And then give yourself that hour every single week. So for myself, I'm sitting down on Friday and writing out my posts for the next week, um, finding images or making images, whatever I need to do. So that that hour is my social media content creation side. Sorry, right, yeah. um, and oftentimes you mentioned, you know, platforms like YouTube and podcasting. And if you've got those foundational content pieces, like a podcast or a YouTube channel, you can lean on those for your social media posts. You right. don't have to start from scratch. Right. Um, one podcast episode could easily turn into dozens of social media posts. Um, so really lean on that content. And it's a really great way to kind of use a call back and have people listen to those podcast episodes. Um, so when it comes to scheduling content, give yourself that hour and whatever you can get done in that hour, be really strict about it too. Um, and that's, that's how much time you should be spending creating your content. Right. And that's so good because, um, maybe about two, three weeks ago, I did an episode, um, where I talked about social media and how much time, I was spending on social media or just on my phone in general because of kind of what I'm doing with trying to promote myself and also, 
getting just caught up in the platform after that. But um, I was like, man, I waste so much time because I was looking at my screen time. Um, I started tracking it on my phone. I was like, this is ridiculous. Um, so having that hour where you specifically set that aside to plan out your content so that when you're actually posting it or thinking of content to post, you're not spending so much time every single day trying to figure it out or what, typing it out or things like that. You could kind of just pull and post, pull and post throughout the week so that you're not you know, spending that on time, time on that, that you could be spending on your business or something else, um, that contributes to you making money or whatever. Um, yeah. And yeah, just to add to that, um, I do think you can spend more time if you really like social media, yeah, but of course. that's your time to, to start outsourcing something else. So maybe it's time to outsource bookkeeping, or maybe it's time to hire an assistant and so that you can spend more time on social media. So I know for me, I spend a lot of time on social media, but I've got a team that helps support my clients. Um, I don't do my own bookkeeping. So right. those kinds of things, it's part of you know, being in business and, and um, having a business, it's fu- it's totally fine. For some people, they actually outsource the social media part if they don't like doing it. Um, so, you know, I really want that to be a starting point for you. And then you can always add on more. And that's when you, you know, start exploring other platforms and building it out from there. I get really mm-hmm. excited about that stuff. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think that's a really good, good thing to kind of point out. Yeah. And, and, and pulling it, to a close katie is starting to figure it out and um just two things that are are important but not quite as important as kind of more second level things maybe not um depending on how you're going about it but um one thing is just to make your page overall look nicer (laughs) uh just you know there's some type of as anything with marketing if it looks good then people, I don't know if people think you're more legitimate or people, you know, think they're just drawn to it more. But what are some ways, um, and we're kind of just moving over to more like tools for social media, um, where you could just make your page look better or more coherent or, uh, you know, I I don't don't know, more aesthetically pleasing? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think a a lot of us want to kind of go that way. I will say if you're starting off, I wouldn't get too worried about it because your content is definitely more important. Um, But easy things you can do. So if you're creating graphics, like you're using something like Canva, I would just pick one font and one color. So one font, one color, always use those. And that's a really great way to make your page look thematic. Um, Mm. If you're taking your own pictures, Use the same filter every single time, and that will make your page look thematic. Um, So doing those things can really help you elevate your branding um, and elevate your page in a very, very simple way. And this is also like a second tier thing. I don't think it's something you should worry about at all until you're, you know, already kind of getting into a groove of things. Um, But that's automation. Um, some people, uh, they're a solopreneur or whatever, um, and they may not want to spend as much time on social media. They don't, they have other things that they want to do or they think they can use their time in other ways, but they also don't necessarily maybe have the resources yet to outsource or, or give that task to someone else. So what are some ways that someone can use automation to help them with their social media experience with their business or personal brand? Yeah. So the easiest thing to automate is scheduling your content, your social media content. Um, My favorite tool right now is Social Report. Um, Literally changed how my team and I use social media. Um, Really great place to start if you want to start automating things. Um, You can also automate things like your reporting. Um, You can automate things like... um, you know, getting notifications for when people tag you or message you. Um, So those are really great places to start when it comes to automation um, and streamlining everything. So I really like to create a system to creating the content, spending that hour a week creating the content. And then that way I can spend the rest of my team, rest of my week actually going in and engaging and networking with people and, and implementing that engagement recipe. Um, so that that's like baseline. That's where you should start when it comes to automation. Scheduling. And uh, I know I know there's some, especially for high school and college students who might be listening to this, 
um, they're 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 budget entrepreneurs. So I know I've looked at Social Report before, and I I don't remember what the rates were for it, but I know that especially if you wanted to be across multiple platforms or have access to certain things, there is uh you have you have to you have to pay like per month or whatever like that. Are there some are there any budget tools that you would recommend? Yeah, so a good budget one if you're starting off with a platform like Instagram is Later, later Later.com. I do recommend that one if you just want uh, a free option. There are some limitations, like there's only a certain number of posts you can schedule at any given time. But I think that um, for most people, if you're just starting out, that's a really good option. And it's free. It's free for um, one. I think it's free for one platform or something like that. Awesome. Okay. And I'll put the links to both of these, all of these in the show notes um, and all of that. And speaking of the show notes, uh, I want to have my audience be able to get in contact with you and whatever you have to offer um, by listening to this podcast. And I'm sure after all the stuff that you just said, they're like, I need to get to find out what she has. So, um, you could just pretty much plug yourself at this point. Of course, I'll put it all in the show notes so they could just click the links um, down there. But any places that you want to direct uh, the audience to go to for you? Yeah, so the best place uh, to kind of enter my world is I've got a free course. It's kind of like an introduction. Um, it's You can go to it by going to onlinedrea.com slash free. And that will get you into the course. Um, but I'm also on social media, of course, everywhere at Online Drea. Awesome. Okay. Um, yep, that will be in the show notes. And people will be able to get in contact with you from there. Thank you so much, Andrea. Thank you for being so flexible and patient with this whole <laughs> ordeal. Uh, you dropped a whole lot of knowledge. You answered all the questions beyond what I even expected. Um, and, and I really appreciate you coming on the call in the show. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode and learned something uh, from Andrea and are excited to take your social media game to another level. If you have any more questions about social media or vision building, feel free to reach out to Andrea or I on Instagram or uh, any other contact mediums. Our at names and contact info will be in the show notes. Lastly, if you enjoy this show at all, Has it provided you any value? If so, leave a rating and review. I'm sure the universe will reward you in some manner in in the future. No, but really, uh, the the ratings and reviews really do give me good feedback and also helps the show progress and grow. So I will love your support in that regard. Thanks, guys, for listening to this episode, and I will talk to you next time. Until then, continue building your vision every single day. Peace.